Yes guys, what's going on people? Welcome back to Carefree Lewis G. Welcome back to another review for you guys today. Chelsea 2, Rennes 1. We have qualified to the last 16 of the Champions League yet again. We have left it late yet again, but Olivier Giroud has turned up. What a last minute goal, what a turnaround and what a response from that late equaliser. And I'm telling you guys, I know what we've said about Olivier Giroud and how he wants to leave and we might need to do what's best for him. But honestly, I think what is best for the club is that we keep Olivier Giroud. I'm going to explain that more in my video. But as usual, before I start this review, if you guys haven't done so already, smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, press the bell notification button as well, lick that subscribe button the same way Olivier Giroud licked the ball with that head in the 91st minute as well. Guys, I'm gassed. I am hope you lot are just as gassed as I am. We're through to the last 16. We're not going to say we're too gassed about that. It's more about the result. If we're being realistic, qualifying for the last 16 was the standard. It wasn't really something that we were expecting to achieve. It's just something that we're meant to go through with. So we've done that. We've qualified for the last 16. We can now focus on qualifying as group winners. Uh, Rens did make us work for it. I want to say very early on, credit to Rens because they were a strong side. And I did say going into this, I'm sure a lot of you agreed as well, Rens could not be underestimated, either espe especially with their form going into the game. Just because they were on a really bad run of fixtures doesn't mean that it would translate the same into the Champions League fixtures as well. They were a very strong team today. Second half, they dominated us. Through periods in the first half as well, they dominated us. Chilwell, I'll be real, he had, his, he had his work cut out for him today against Doku. I think he had a poor game by his standards, but I don't think he played poorly. I think it's just more we have to respect, uh, what's his name? Uh, Do we have to respect Doku, we have to respect Renz. They are a very strong side and you do have to understand that you can only deal with the opponents that you're facing. If you're facing a very strong team in Renz, sometimes you're gonna get done. And I think that's the case with Ben Chilwell. Sometimes he did get done, he is a bit tired. He probably should have come off a lot earlier than he did, if he even did come off. I don't remember if he did, but you'll let me know in the comments section. But regardless, I do think he should have come off a, a bit earlier. I think some of Frank Lampard's subs were a bit iffy, but I don't want to say too much because it was also his subs that won us the game. Olivier Giroud with that last minute heads up, we finally have a perfect plan B. And this is exactly why I'm saying do not sell Olivier Giroud. It does not make sense to me why you would sell this guy. I don't care if he's on the last six months of his contract. I don't care if it might be what's best for him. I do care about what's best for Olivier Giroud, but I'm a Chelsea fan. I care about what's best for the club first. And realistically, we are not getting a third choice striker of Olivier Giroud's quality that is going to be willing to play behind Tammy Abraham and Timo Werner. We're in the middle of a title charge. I'm not going to speak too much about the Champions League because we can play that off a game at a time. If we get to the quarterfinals, cool. Take it a game at a time from there. If we make the semi-finals as well, at that point it's anybody's game. So take it a game at a time in the Champions League, but for the Premier League, we need someone like Olivier Giroud, especially in the later stage of the season. We are going to have injuries through the Christmas period. We are going to have injuries coming out of the Christmas period. This season, the fixture list does not care about the well-being of, of football players. I was about to say Chelsea players, but football players in general. There will be a lot of injuries. Guarantee you one of the strikers goes out. We need somebody like Olivier Giroud as that plan B. It would be stupid to get rid of him. Yeah, you run the risk of him going to a rival if we let him go on a free in the summer. I don't care. Personally, I will take that risk, especially with Olivier Drew's age as well. He, his style of play ages like fine wine, but eventually he will age as well. So I, I'm not too worried about him going to a rival. Plus, even if he didn't want it to stay in, in London, it's what's best for him. I don't mind. I don't mind seeing him go at the summer. I do not want to see him go right now. Olivier Drew is going to be very crucial to us towards the back end of the season. But we. The game, I think Chelsea were the more dominant side for the start of the game. We went 1-0 up through a brilliant Mason Mount ball in. Great, great aggression to win the ball back in the midfield. Brought it forward about 20 yards and unleashed a great long ball to Callum Hudson-Odoi in space. You put it into the bottom right-hand corner. It was a great finish from him. This one you can't put down to a goalkeeping mistake. And it was 1-0. And I'll be real, Callum Hudson-Odoi was our best attacker throughout the match. Kind of robbed him of an assist as well because of that team over and a miss that we're really not going to talk about. But Germany has done a number on this match. I don't know what... 
I don't know what Joachim Lowe did to this guy over the last two weeks. But he hasn't come back the same player. I do think if I'm going to be serious for a minute, I do think he's been massively overplayed. I think he should have come off a lot earlier than he did. I don't think it made too much sense to bring off Hudson-Odoi when he was our best attacker going forward. Especially with the way Timo Werner was playing. He looked massively off the pace, but he's also been overplayed way too much. I think, I think we really should have rested Timo Werner. But, again, I'm not going to complain too much because we turned the game around. Rennes side to dominate as the first half continued to progress, and especially through the second half as well. Jorginho and Kovacic, again, didn't really do much well together. I thought Kovacic was the better out of the pair, but it's still the best out of a bad bunch. And a goal did look like it was coming, and it eventually did come, but off a corner. And it's so unlucky for Edouard Mendy because he was this close to break to equaling Petacek's record in his first 10 games of eight clean sheets and two goals conceded. So it's very unlucky for him. I do feel a bit peaked for him, but it is what it is. It was an, an I think the what's the name? The number nine was left pretty unmarked, and it was a bit of a weird one from Silver and Zuma because you do expect better from them. I thought they would have been a bit tighter on him. But the comeback, the response, it was perfect. Olivier Drew comes on. Rennes could have done really better in managing that second goal. I will be real about it, but I'm not going to complain because we got the second goal and we got the win. And we know what Olivier Drew does in the air. He is dirty. No one is beating Olivier Drew in the air. So we got the win through that. It was 2-1. It was a hard-fought game, so credit to Rennes. But yeah, they're out of the Champions League now. Their best bet is a third-place Europa League playoff spot. But... That's it for them. We're going to go straight into the player ratings. We're going to start off with Edouard Mendy. Very unlucky not to reach Pear Cech's record, like I said before. He had a lot of very good saves in the match. Really did deserve a clean sheet, so it's unlucky for him. But great performance from him. I'm not going to let it take too much from the ratings. I'm going to give him an 8. As for Laqueta, I thought he was quietly very solid, very composed on the ball. Came out with a good, with a good amount of blocks as well, so he's going to get a 7 from me. Thiago Silva saved Ben Chilwell a lot, especially in the first half with that dodgy pass. I thought his composure was excellent. Passing was excellent. Tackles as well, just excellent. It was another great performance from him, so he's going to get an 8 from me. Kurt Zuma, brilliant air really until the equaliser, but I do think he could have got closer to the Rennes player. I really should remember his name, but I don't remember his name. But I think he should have got a bit closer to him. That was his only real mistake in the game. Bar that, I thought he was very solid. So I'm going to give him a 7. Can't be at the same point as Thiago Silva, but is what he is. Ben Chilwell started well. Really did start well. I thought his link-up play with Werner and Mount was good. But as the game progressed, he started to fall off. And he just looked obviously very tired. Doku started having his way with him as the game progressed. I thought he handled himself very well in the first half. But the second half, he just fell a bit off. Again, could have been subbed off a bit earlier, but I'm going to give him a 5. Jorginho, again, struggled to have impact today. Was very slow in the midfield. And I'll be real, I've been trying to campaign for Jorginho to start more games. But he is not helping my case, so I'm going to give Jorginho a 5. You lot say I'm biased, so here we go. I am not biased. I'll try to call it as much as it is. Mateo Kovacic, I thought he was slightly better than Jorginho. I thought his work rate was good. I thought him off the press was excellent, but the final ball let him down too much, so I'm going to give him a 6. Mason Mount, though, he was brilliant. Best midfielder out of the three by a long shot. Brilliant assist for the first goal, all over the midfield. Very good decision-making on the ball. He was excellent, so I'm going to give him an 8. Um, hudson Doy as well, another 8. Brilliant going forward, should have had an assist as well as a goal. Defensive work rate was strong as well. He came back a lot, especially through that first half, so 8 for him as well. Timo Werner definitely needs a rest, really does need a rest. He looked off the pace, passes, touches, just weren't really there for him. I'm glad there's five days between now and the Spurs game because hopefully he's back fully fresh for that match. Or maybe he ends up getting benched for Pulisic if he's fresh and comes off off the bench. I don't know, but he definitely needs a rest. So I'm going to give him a five. Tammy Abraham, link up, hold up player four was very strong from him today. Really unlucky not to get an assist as well, so I'm going to give him a seven. And then Golo Kante, I thought the midfield definitely looked a lot more solid with him on the pitch. Even though he equalised, but that was a set piece, so you can't really blame him too much on that. So I'm going to give him a 7. Olivier Giroud, what a plan B, man. Do not sell this man. Do not sell this man. I'll keep telling you, honestly, he's the best third-choice striker we're going to get. 8 for him. Excellent. Reese James is the other substitution. Didn't really have much else to do. It's a 90-second minute, so no rating for him. But guys... 
That's the end of the review. Plus player ratings. We are through to the last 16 of the Champions League. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G. And I'll see you guys very soon. Take care and up the chels.